everyone, on behalf of IPNCA and CATS, I welcome all the speakers and each one of you to the Play Story session of Festival of Places 2020-21, jointly hosted by Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts, IPNCA New Delhi, and CATS. The Festival of Places is an initiative of CATS, a not-for-profit organization working in the area of heritage conservation, management, and advocacy since 2001. We at CATS feel very strongly about the dismal state of public spaces in our cities and firmly believe change in the way we think, talk, and use public spaces can only begin at the grassroots by creatively engaging people with places and empowering them to make a difference to the places and spaces around. The Festival of Places is an idea born out of the spirit of volunteerism to come together, collaborate, co-create, and celebrate places that nurture health, happiness, and foster community living. Moreover, the festival aims to help discover the much overlooked human dimension of spaces. The main highlight of the festival this year is Play Story, a series of online storytelling sessions that help understand the hidden dimensions, multiple interpretations, and varied memories associated with places, highlighting their distinct characteristics, as well as unraveling the bond that people have with them, a connection that lives through their experiences. The storytelling sessions by professionals, scholars, and students from diverse fields focused on public spaces have been planned around the idea of exploring memory in places. So let us walk today in the company of a young budding filmmaker and an architect to experience the pleasure of sitting on benches in the middle of a road, sipping a hot cup of coffee as strangers pass by and find out what makes MG Marg in Gangtok a remarkable place. The title of today's play story is MG Marg Gangtok and the theme for the session is Street as an Engaging Space. Our play storyteller for the session, Mr. Anirban Dev Roy, will be taking us around the place and share his personal memories with us. The place expert for the session, Dr. Pratik Sudhagaran, will take a deeper look into the public spaces. But what's so special in a road? Well, if it is the most happening place in the town, it surely is special. And who cares where the road leads to when it is the destination in itself? Come join us in the revelry as we immerse in the joy of being in a non-smoking, fit and little free, pedestrians only boulevard in the heart of Gangtok. Our play storyteller, Anirban Dev Roy, is an aspiring animator and is a second year student in the 3D animation and VFX program of the School of Entertainment Arts, Mumbai. He loves the use of drawn pictures to convey a story. Apart from animation and drawing, he also enjoys playing video games, reading books, and watching Japanese animes. Before becoming an animation student, he completed his school level graduation from Army School Jabalpur. Coming from an army personal family, he has lived in almost every state in India for at least a few months and cherishes all of those memories. Out of all the places he once lived in, Gangtok is a place very close to his heart. Our place expert, Dr. Prati Sudhakran, is an internationally recognized building scientist, an expert in the field of high performance buildings, enveloped information modeling, and bio-inspired architecture. He graduated from the University of Mumbai. He was a research fellow at the High Performance Building Lab at Georgia Institute of Technology, Atlanta, USA. He's also a PhD guide at the MIT School of Architecture and Planning at MIT University and School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi. He is an executive director of the ASA DI Region 2030 and the editorial member of the Journal of the Indian Institute of Architects. He set up the Center for Sustainability in Practice, Education and Research in Architecture, India. He's board of studies, member of several universities and has developed up-to-date curriculums to foster educational leadership. His design studio called Crea Architects and Interior Designers is based out of Cochin, Chennai and Bangalore. He has conducted hands-on design workshops in Ladakh, Aroway, Bhutan, Sikkim, Kerala, and Sri Lanka. He has also published numerous papers in both national and international journals and has traveled far and wide across the globe to document destinations of architectural prominence for his upcoming book named India and Her Motorcycle. He is a trained musician, theater artist, and has been passionate about interior design, photography, and filmmaking. So now I will begin my conversation around MG Mark and I will invite Anirban to present his play story. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Anirban Devroy, and today I would be presenting about MG Mark, a street which is in the city of Gangtok. Whenever we, whenever we think of a street, mostly we think of it as a part of the road that takes us from point A to point B. However, MG Mark is a little bit different. It is one of the only streets in India that you were meant to interact with and isn't a road for people to reach their destination because it is the destination itself and no cars are allowed to enter there. It has become a tourist destination for a long time and is considered to be one of, if not the most popular uh, attractions in the city, be it watching a beautiful scenery, shopping, 
clicking pictures or even interacting with people, the first place that would come to one's mind is MG Mark. Whenever someone visits MG Mark, it doesn't take long to realize that everyone present there is a part of one very big, wholesome and cheerful community who are always ready to welcome new people. Gangtok is not really actually very far from both of my hometowns, Gohati and Kolkata. Therefore, I was able to experience a little bit of home from those uh, from that part as well, because of which I like to consider that place of home away from home. Even though I lived there only for two years, I feel very deeply connected to that place. And now I would like to show my video and I hope I can take you all through the journey that I faced in those two years. MG Mark in Gangtok is a place that helped me shape the person I am today. So yeah, that's exactly what we are going to talk about. But before we begin, I would like to start by saying thank you to Jaden Animations for being an inspiration in this video. Now moving back to our topic, I have lived in Gangtok for a couple of years and therefore had a lot of experience in MG Mark and my brain remembers most of the memories in mint condition with every single detail for some reason? Hmm, I don't know why. But anyway, I remember all the places we visited there. From my favorite shops located in that place or the amazing restaurants with the delicious Asian delicacies. Even just thinking about all this makes my mind nostalgic and my belly goes hungry. Some of my experiences in MG Mark have been really nice and me alongside my entire functioning human body adores them. While some of them were not really that great and in simpler words they were straight up nightmare fuel. No exaggeration. See this place right here? The place in the red? Yeah, this one? Well, it has quite an experience attached to it. Not a good one, but a memory is a memory, I guess. During my first year stay in Gangtok, me and a classmate decided to go to MG Mark because we had to buy some stuff for our assignment and, well, we just needed an excuse to go there. Being the dumb kid I was, I started fooling around and eventually fell down because of a rock that was lying on the ground. The impact was chin first and well, it hurt pretty hard. I was surprised to see how many strangers that were present in the location reached out to help and some even checked if my condition was severe. Well, that was the moment I realized these people are nice. When I finally stood up on both of my legs, I immediately looked at my classmate and his first response was, Oh, it looks like someone scooped out some skin out of your chin with a spoon. I was not expecting that and we had a good laugh out of a bad joke. I know, I know, a YouTuber has already made this joke, but it happened to me before he made the video, so there's nothing I can do about it. One more experience that I heavily associate with this place is the karaoke systems in restaurants. You see, whenever our family would go out to have a dinner, all the people in the restaurant would unite and collectively sing lots of songs together, which were often songs from their youth. I never participated because apparently it was way too awkward for a 12 year old me. <sighs> you must be kidding me. But I could tell that the adults had a very good time. They were definitely inspired by the Japanese working culture and added a little bit of Indian touch to make things really spicy. Since we are on the topic of memories and experiences, one more doesn't hurt, right? One time I was visited by my cousin and we decided to go to, well, you guessed it, MG Mark. 
Vi quickly hopped on his bike and marched ahead. MG Mark doesn't allow any sort of vehicle to enter, so we just parked in front of the entrance and didn't think much. After coming out of a store in no more than five minutes, my cousin noticed something. The bike was gone. Yeah, it was towed by the police. My cousin freaked out and got into a little bit of trouble from our parents. But I was safe because I was the little one, so that turned out well. But not all of my memories are like rainbows and unicorns. There is one memory that I want to absolutely eradicate from the depths of my mind. There was a series of earthquakes that happened in Nepal in the year 2015. Sikkim being the closest Indian state to the country also faced lots of consequences. Everything I saw and heard on the news was terrifying. Unfortunately, lots of people lost their homes and some people couldn't make it out alive. The fear of everything shaking out of the blue was terrifying and really disturbing. We did become a part of history, but it was definitely not worth it. Sadly, it's not the first time that Gangtok or Sikkim in general face these disasters. In the year of 1997, a huge landslide cursed the place. 28 innocent souls lost their lives, followed by huge infrastructure damage. Disasters are not really common there, but they are not rare either. But don't think of this location as a disaster dump. There are a lot of places where you can have fun. So let's try to focus on the fun stuff. One who takes a look at this place for the first time may say, "Oh, it looks similar to a Switzerland street," which you should because that was literally the entire inspiration behind it. This makes every visit to MG Mark way more memorable because it adds a little bit of exotic touch to it. See these benches? Well, they hold quite an important value in MG Mark. But why are they so special? Do they give you any sort of superpower, or do they let you travel to different dimensions? Or no, it is nothing like that. It is just a place where people would sit down to enjoy the view while eating MG Mark's popular softy ice cream. And I was one of those people. I would go there every winter to have my favorite ice cream, and well, eventually get a cold. The funny thing is I knew exactly what was going to happen but still went out of my way to do it. These benches can be found throughout the roads of MG Mark till you reach a diversion which is also the end of the street. The left hand side turn of the street leads to New Market which is basically the same as MG Mark except it allows cars to enter. Meanwhile the right hand side turn from the street Led to Lal Market, which was way more busy than MG Mark all the time, and was a small street market in its own. The roads for reaching MG Mark are full of twists and turns, and might make you a bit dizzy if you are driving. But hey, the destination is definitely worth it. Since we are talking about a place, it obviously has a history behind it, so let's talk about it. Surprisingly, not much is known about Sikkim, let alone Gangtok, as compared to the rest of the states in the country. But one thing I know for sure is that the first civilization in Sikkim was done by the people from Bhutan. As time went by, the majority of the population went from Bhutanese to Nepalese, which is true till this day. Sikkim became the 22nd state of India in the year of 1975 after the people of independent Sikkim started rioting and the monarch thought we should do something about it so they joined team india Did you know that the political system in Sikkim is completely different from the rest of the country and nobody has even dared to mess with it In 2008 it was declared India's first open defecation free state and is the third richest state after Delhi and Chandigarh according to per capita income 
Gangtok became the capital of Sikkim in the mid 19th century during the British conquest which was previously a city named Tumlong in the west side of Sikkim. After the Britishers left for good or bad it's up to you to decide. Lots of tourist places were open for the public some of which already existed while some were newly created. Some of the big tourist spots in the place included Room Tech Monastery, Dubdi Monastery and every other monastery in Namchi during that time. The Indochina border also known as Nathula border on the Kanchenjunga peak was also a part of high interest. However, the access was pretty limited because of the tension between the two countries. In the past, MG Mark looked nothing like the place we know today for obvious reasons. It was filled with small shops and street vendors trying to sell you stuff. As time went by, new regulations were added for the place and slowly the place started developing. Before the locals had any idea, MG Mark became a place of peak interest among tourists. And it's been going like this ever since. The moments I shared were my time in Gangtok. But I wonder what experiences await for you if you ever decide to go there. Because in my opinion, Sikkim is a hidden chapter in the books of many adventurers yet to be unfolded. Because I have never seen anyone even mention about this state or any of the northeastern states located in the country. And that is the entire reason why I chose the place that I chose. Because bringing spotlight to at least one of these hidden gems would make me really happy. And you never know how big of a warm welcome awaits you. So, please do plan a trip there whenever possible. Thanks to everyone uh, for this very beautifully made uh, video about uh, NG Mark in Gangtok and also, you know, presenting to us the history of the place and uh, your personal memories associated with it. Uh, I will now invite Pratik uh, to present his uh, story for the place. Thank you. Just... Uh... Yeah, so uh, I, I'm extremely thankful to CATS and IGNCA and uh, all other associated organizations for inviting me for this unique event, the Festival of Places 2021. I'm so happy to know that uh, the highlight of the festival this year is Place Stories uh, on the theme of uh, exploring memory in uh, places. Now, for the session, I was asked uh, to explore street as an engaging space, which is a central theme of the play story. And I've been, I've been thinking about uh, the word uh, street ever since. Uh, these are some of my travels. Uh, you know, uh, when I've traveled, uh, had an opportunity to travel outside the country, and I've seen, uh, you know, uh, I've seen painters and musicians and. Uh, uh, cafes and restaurants all uh, spilling out into the streets uh, in, in other countries and odds are uh, you haven't probably thought about this twice you know until now what uh, 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 how many of us actually start thinking about what is a street a road a lane a boulevard uh, you know for starters an ordinary road like Anirban uh, said is generally described something that uh, uh, you know is used to get from point A to point B while streets, on the other hand, uh, are, uh, are said to be public roads that have buildings on both sides. So while a street is a road, uh, not all roads are streets. So now streets often run perpendicular to avenues which have trees or buildings on them. Uh, and uh, avenues, uh, uh, there are different kinds of streets and uh, roads too, like a boulevard, for example, is a wide street. And then you have veins and lanes and drives and uh, so if all this, uh, you know, all these definitions is, is more of a Western definition of what a street uh, is or could be. But what about uh, streets in India? Uh, you know, uh, as a renowned uh, critic, uh, uh, Appadurai, 
he said in way back in 1987 that streets and their uh, their culture uh, lie at uh, at the heart of public life in contemporary india especially in those many cities where urban housing is crowded and uncomfortable and the weather is never too cold the streets are where much of the life is lived in india and the streets are adopted by the public you know they are cohabited spaces uh, life worlds and a theater of contiguity change conflict cordiality so that's that's what uh, streets in india do within they uh, they are ephemeral and they are uh, they are forever changing and constantly adapting to new uh, uh, conditions and events uh, that uh, that happen on them like for example in mumbai uh, you know, the, uh, the city i grew up in overnight uh, you know during ganesh chaturthi the character of the streets change or uh, or you know in the streets of banaras that i i frequently visit uh, you know the, the the character of the streets is it's uh, uh, there are there are uh, parameters that cannot be defined so streets in india have uh, traditionally been the public spaces uh, around which social life has uh, revolved you know in towns and cities uh, they 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 kind of uh, uh become the urban public realm you know where people congregate celebrate interact for example uh you can see this auto rickshaw uh, guy you know suddenly this the celebration after india wins a cricket match and uh, or uh, you know uh, streets that lead to a temple have a certain character so streets in india have have basically been uh, or traditionally been the intermediate spaces that negotiate between the private and the and the public so uh, the 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 interesting a uh, fact about indian streets are that they are uh, you know ever changing like if you go to mohammad ali road uh, during eid and you know the users and activities constantly keep changing in fact the character of the streets keep constantly changing on public holidays religious festivals and other spe- uh, special events so streets in india unlike uh, many of the the very well defined uh, western definition of what a street is streets in india uh, would would uh, embrace more of informality or extension of semi private activities or restricted spatial segregation between uh, you know vehicles pedestrians animals social spaces recreational spaces so these are some of the main uh, characteristics of the indian street now now uh, uh, gang talk as anirban also just showed that uh, is is one such indian street uh, unique in its own way you know with its own story of evolution like he said uh, its own character that it uh, that makes it worth remembering and uh, as a visitor it it will be one of the most prominent experiences that will stay etched in your memory uh, after a trip uh, trip to gangtok so most of you all know after india's independence nehru signed a treaty with the with the royal uh, chogyal monarchs of sikkim and by 1970 uh five uh, uh, the the monarchy of sikkim was withdrawn and sikkim then became an indian state with gangtok as its capital and it was uh, only in the uh, uh, as recent as 1980s uh, that uh, a road was built between new jalpaiguri and uh, gangtok and that's how that's how tourism opened up and uh, to, uh, gangtok or sikkim became more accessible and uh, it, it was only Uh, uh as recent as 2008 where this entire pedestrianization of mg mark took place so some of the uh, uh, like you can see uh, you know uh, this is a, a, a 1919 uh, sketch of mg mark and this is a 1977 photo of mg mark so some of the past issues at mg mark were congestion and there was a lot of conflict between pedestrians and vehicles and shortage of parking facility and encroachment and vehicle pollution so uh, my very good friend uh, uh, architect asan subba who works uh, in the in the uh, urban development department of sikkim uh, and uh, this was uh, the northeastern council and the ministry under the ministry of development of north uh, eastern uh, region they uh, uh, undertook the uh, project of upgradation and remodeling of existing distribution system of mahatma gandhi road and its surrounding areas in gangtok now uh i was uh, you know uh, they were they were really inspired from the traditional walking culture of hill 
hill folk in the himalayas you know you'll you'll always see that they are much sturdier and stronger and they hop around the the steep slopes of uh, uh, the hills so this entire uh, concept of pedestrianizing uh, uh, mg road was basically inspired from the the traditional walking culture of hill folk in the himalayas and hence uh, 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 the pedestrianization of mg road was a popular idea and and a choice so uh, before i get to why i believe that uh, you know uh, uh, mg marg in sikkim or gangtok is is a great place uh, i i think i thought you all should know exactly uh, what are some of the parameters that make public spaces great you know so great public spaces are those places which uh, where uh, you know uh, celebrations are held uh, i'm talking about great public spaces so where celebrations are held social and economic exchanges occur one feels safe uh, uh uh friends run into each other and cultures mix so as you can see here the four qualities of a great place you know accessibility people are engaged in activities the space is comfortable and has a good image it is a sociable space so uh, mg road now sandwiched between the palace and kazi and tibet road on one side and the 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 uh, uh the national uh highway on the other side seems to be well connected walkable in close proximity convenient and accessible and uh, this was uh, this was a uh, uh, image from a coffee table book uh, in a bookshop that i visited in gangtok and uh, mg marg as you see is uh, easily accessible from the namnong road which is a road uh, you know a major road passing through the city uh, and uh, the road diverges into two separate roads just before entering mg marg and you'll see the 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 kind of central location to mg marg makes it so accessible and uh, uh, you know even the the flow of traffic uh, is uh, makes it very convenient to the location of uh, mg marg so uh, mg marg is is basically uh, you know around less than uh, uh, half a kilometer around 310 uh, uh, meters uh, uh, it's it's a plaza like main market uh, and it's a, it's a prominent highlight of uh, sikkim's tourism industry in fact uh, you know it is it is uh, it is one of the starting points to the other tourism uh, circuits in sikkim and it is around 60 feet wide with no vehicular zone the street is flanked by uh, shops and cafes and restaurants like you uh, saw in some of the photo in, uh, photos that anibin had shown and uh, it is it is a hub of social interaction in fact uh, 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 the entire area is litter free smoke free and it's it's also known as london street because of the entire uh, ambience created by the victorian style street lights uh, that uh, the government has selected the paved pathways bakery shops across the street so very popularly known as the london street uh, uh, there and Uh, let me let me just take you all quickly through a walk through to mg marg and uh, as an architect and you know as a uh, uh, as a planner and uh, as a designer how i started seeing uh, sikkim very very differently so just before at the front end of uh, 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 you know at the front end of mg marg before the gandhi uh, statue uh, there is a kind of buffer space between the main road and the street and it's it's also a non vehicular uh, zone and uh, there's a there's a tourist information center and uh, uh, you know there are uh, police owned spaces and there's a district control room building and there's the uh, there's a pathway leading to the the uh, a very popular hindu temple and there's of course uh, uh, momo shops around so uh, uh, what what was interesting is that uh, there was constantly uh, you know sikkim uh, being recently uh, you know a part of uh, the country uh, there was this, uh, there was there was this image making of it being a very prominent part of the country whether it is uh, being named uh, after gandhi ji or even uh, the recently Uh, added flag post or even the uh, you know uh, 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 even uh, uh, the the naming of the street in gandhi statue all of this there was there was this uh, uh, constant uh, image making of mg mark to be a very very prominent uh, part of the country so uh mg marg like you can see this is around the 310 meter stretch it is it is one of the busiest streets of the town and it is uh, you know located on a on a contoured plain with separate lanes for uh, uh, pedestrian and then vehicular and uh, uh, pedestrian is more active uh, throughout the day because of the the commercial edge uh, uh, you know while the while the vehicular edge uh, becomes more active at night time and the building edge 
along MG Marg. You can see the entire building edge along uh, MG Marg is partially porous. It has it has around uh, 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 around forty nine entrances and exits in the three hundred and ten meter stretch, and there are no opaque edges in the continuous. You know there are a few partially porous surfaces. So you can see that uh, there are so many uh, porous uh, uh, exits and entrances into into uh, MG Marg and. Uh, what is interesting is in the evening the footfall increases you know the the since the tourists uh, 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 retreat back to town and roam around the street the, uh, uh, like i said it is a starting point and uh, the comeback point uh, after tourist circuits uh, there's a lot of tourists who come back every day after after a day, day trip or a, or a week trip or a, 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 and you know and they roam around the street and the, the three major elements are active uh, shop fronts, greenery on the median, which, which kind of enhances uh, uh, the visual experience and uh, uh, benches along the median. So uh, presence of, uh, you know, footpaths on the shopping streets, they kind of, uh, you can see there are uh, uh, footpaths on either side and then the mark in, uh, in between. So the presence of these uh, footpaths uh, kind of uh, uh, segregates the pedestrians and the customers. However, it reduces the uh, the kind of uh, informality on the street. You know, there's uh, it's more uh, formal. So the ground floor use of uh, MG Marg is basically numerous commercial and retail stores, and pedestrian and vehicular move uh, movement are bifurcated uh, by a stretch of green ledge, uh, which has a kind of sitting. So. Uh, uh, a, a very very interesting uh, uh, design. Another the most interesting point about MG Marg, especially uh, the Mall Road, is that it means differently to different people. It is different. Uh, it means different to local people. It means different to tourists. It means uh, different to various communities that stay uh, in Sikkim. It means different to the various immigrants that have moved to Sikkim. So there are about around 15,000 people in Gangtok and it is increasing day by day due to its thriving tourism industry. And the features of the road are mostly kept same from time to time in this tiny state. And the street edges are carefully developed by not hampering the view to the snow-capped uh, majestic Himalayas. Uh, uh, in fact, from MG Marg, you can see the Kanchenjunga and uh, uh, the, both the ends of the pedestrian paths uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they have the intermediate public transport or paratransit on both the ends, which connects Sikkim to uh, two different main cities nearby. So this is probably the, the first place that you would visit uh, when you drive into Gangtok. And there's a strong cultural display in food and street furniture that gives uh, uh, makes this place really unique and it kind of gives it uh, 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 individualism uh, to this place. Now, at the, at the beginning, of the street, uh, the huge uh, uh, statue of Mahatma Gandhi, around five to six meters high, and also the recently installed uh, uh, flagpole that I showed you with the, the tricolor waving high. It is meant to be a, a big scale sculptural installations, you know, but like I said, uh, marking Sikkim's um, belongingness to India and thus acting as a uh, acting as landscape elements, uh, uh, defining the space, acting as historical reminders, uh, becoming as important, uh, uh, becoming an important part of time and space because this, the space is constantly changing. It's ephemeral. It's, uh, it's adapting throughout the day. And the street also has some fountains installed along the middle band. Uh, however, uh, many of them aren't currently operable. Now, it takes a sharp turn. MG Mark takes a sharp turn after continuing a long stretch of a layout. And then here the street provides to the vehicular road. It kind of opens up into the vehicular road. And then there's this uh, a large uh, a projector screen playing clips promoting uh, Sikkim tourism. And another big sculpture can be seen. I don't know how many of you have uh, seen this uh, in Gangtok, the four meter high sculpture, that of a red panda, the, the state animal of Sikkim. It has been strategically merged with the landscaping such that it doesn't stand out as an you can see it is it is kept right here and it is not very loud and it is, does not stand out but very strategically uh, placed so that it doesn't stand out as an uh, you know it stands out as an informative promotional element but uh, thus it stands uh, uh, as a sculptural example of subtle expression so uh, this is uh, very very interesting and other access points other than uh, the exit and entrances from the main road, you, you can see steps and bridges and ramps. MG Marg is connected by an overhead bridge accessible by 
uh, by a staircase uh, from the footpath of the lower lane of the Nangmang Road. So uh, there's a lot of access paths. Now, interestingly, uh, you know, uh, there are multiple stepped uh, uh, pathways and exits throughout MG Mark. You can see this, uh, this one going down to Lal Market and then the one that's coming from Nanmang Road. Most of them are narrow and uh, uh, many of it is uh, improperly lit. Uh, those on the right side open up to the upper lane of Nanmang Road and on the left, uh, uh, they, they go down to uh, Lal Market, which is another informal marketplace uh, in uh, MG Mark. And uh, uh, if if anyone's lived here for like I think Anirban has lived here for two years. If anyone's lived here for uh, you know a year long period or more, yeah, it, you will see how this mark kind of transforms throughout the year. You know, whole it's a whole different arena from time to time by you know by the sheer uh, uh, the sheer uh, uh, types of activities held over there. Every other week, some small scale or uh, big scale event happens. In, uh, 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 you know with the uh, entire character of the street uh, ever changing. And then there are uh, social cultural performances and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it kind of acts as a social center on such days, drawing in tourists, locals, people from other parts of uh, uh, the, the state, they all come here uh, to celebrate uh, these events. And uh, uh, one big event is of course the book fair, which is held during Losar, which is the Tibetan New Year. Uh, uh, of the Buddhist community. And then there are several handicraft fairs and furniture fairs. And so all of this is also uh, an opportunity. It kind of encourages the local craftsmen to continue, uh, uh, continue their craft by giving them an opportunity to sell their products in a, in a tourist area. So uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, street is not just uh, beautiful, but it's also, it is also an opportunity for economic, uh, uh, you know, uh, boosting the economy of the locals here. So regular uh, cultural shows of ethnic dance and drama and music performance are organized here. And you'll always see, you'll always see a lot of young emerging artists uh, sitting, uh, uh, you know, by themselves and uh, uh, performing on MG Marg. And there are, uh, there's a small crowd, uh, 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 you know, forming around them. And uh, they, uh, it's, it's op uh, like an open arena and open performance spaces. So uh, on, uh, and it's, it's also very interesting to see uh, MG Mark transform through the seasons, you know, on clear sky days, MG Mark is lively space, even on sunny days during summers, the weather isn't too hot or uh, so people still roam around in the open area and relax on benches as uh, usual. But, uh, you know, you, you also have your occasional hailstorms that cover MG Mark in snow for some hours, walking becomes difficult as a paved uh, uh, streets become slippery in snow and people are seen playing with the snow or taking uh, leisure walks after the hailstorm stops. So it, it kind of, uh, you know, transforms itself uh, during various seasons. Uh, rains are common though in Gangtok throughout the year as the rains are mostly uncertain and short, uh, short time there. People usually take, you know, as soon as it starts running, they, they run and take shelter under the roofs of the buildings. Uh, on MG Mark and they wait for the rain to stop. So MG Road seems even more beautiful with reflecting lights on the wet ground. And I, I always uh, uh, love MG Mark just after uh, the Shahs because it, it really looks, uh, uh, you know, very beautiful with the light uh, reflecting on the paving. And there are, there are numerous benches uh, uh, along, the, uh, along the beautiful uh, uh, landscape and Victorian uh, style uh, street lamps throughout the middle line of MG Marg, you know, the benches, they're approximately 1.2 meter wide and uh, the, uh, the metal frame, you can see that they're made out of metal frame or wooden planks placed with gaps so that rainwater can easily drain off. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, another observation, I think, is that uh, the, the non-continuous uh, uh, hard wooden planks are also uncomfortable for street animals or drunkards to sleep on, and, uh, you know, after hours. So let's uh, uh, keep them intact even during night hours when not in use. So uh, uh, a very, very interesting design. You'll always see, uh, you know, school children or people sitting and reading books or sipping coffee or uh, eating momos and ice cream and uh, chatting away into the evening. So uh, it, uh, uh, the, the place kind of facilitates interaction between humans. So very, very interesting. All the benches 
are uh, linearly arranged uh, and uh, a, a linear setup also helps in managing the crowd you know on mg mark says that the people remain in a linear spread uh, support uh, uh, supporting the movement and circulation across the street not causing any unnecessary crowding in seating spots so so uh, unlike many other streets in india uh, you know which is crowded also it provides uh, mg mark the, the uh, linear movement it provides ease of access uh, while walking along the marketplace as the nearest bench is within meters at every spot. So very, very uh, interesting because, uh, you know, you also have physical activity space uh, for old age people and the people from senior age group are often seen on MG Mark taking strolls, evening walks and relaxing on benches. And you don't have to, uh, there is no honking of vehicles or, you know, uh, there is leisure space for school kids and school going teacher, uh, teenagers uh, are often uh, seen spending time with their friends on the benches, buying snacks. So very, very interesting uh, space. And uh, also, uh, uh, you know, wayfinding uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, is easy in uh, MG Mark. You know, on MG Mark, the built and unbuilt uh, elements uh, provide a sense of unidirectional flow along the street. You know, the sculptures, the flagpoles, the sacred fig tree uh, in the landscape can be considered. Uh, they are actually considered as local landmark elements for navigation. For example, if you ask someone, hey, how do I get there? You know, they uh, uh, they actually say, okay, take a take a right from Baker's Cafe, or how do I get there? You know, take a take a left from Draven uh, Walk. So there's this very interesting uh, uh, wayfinding amongst the locals because some of these buildings stand out among the others, and thus they act as location markers because of their facade design. For example, you can see in the Dragon Walk uh, restaurant. It has these huge dragon sculptures on its facade, so it, it, which can't be missed, you know, by by tourists. Uh, our Baker's Cafe, it has an it has a very distinct English bakery feel with the chosen colors and lighting. So these these act these buildings itself act as commercial signages and uh, advertise, uh, you know, advertising from a major part of wayfinding in MG Road. And now. Uh, most of the, the, the buildings and shops there have signages that correspond with bold letters and saturated base colors of high contrast and neon signages that make it very, very interesting for, for wayfinding and, you know, ease of finding your places. Now, uh, in terms of visual pollution, I think uh, this is the only huge uh, uh, billboard uh, uh, there's, in fact, there's hardly any billboard in, in Gangtok to avoid any kind of visual pollution. This is, in fact, the only billboard that uh, uh, one can spot, uh, you know, uh, just prior to the beginning of MG Mark. So there's no, there's no unnecessary posters of politicians or unnecessary billboards and all of that. You know, the, you just have uh, uh, shops with their brand banners and most restaurants have beautiful interiors where from the street you can look into the the restaurants uh, into uh, into the big size windows of the shops and they can look back into the street so there's this there's this visual connection from the out and the in and uh, that makes it uh, very very interesting and like i said the victorian uh, it, the street is optimally lit during the evening hours there are street lamps placed all along the center of the street, you know, the, in the old Victorian style. That's why it's uh, sometimes referred to as the London street. And all these street lights are in pairs such that one, uh, one uh, lamp hangs on the other side of the middle line of the street, while the shops, cafes, restaurants have large windows are brightly lit, thus lighting up uh, the street. Uh, uh, you know, the, the streets are always lit. There is There are no dark spaces. There are no spaces where you will feel unsafe or there are shady activities happening. No, you will it's uh, uh, the entire mark is lit up by both these Victorian style and the shop front. So very uh, interesting in that way. Now, the street is uh, uh, leveled uh, uh, throughout and there are hardly any physical obstructions. So it's a, it's a sort of barrier free and universal design. And, uh, 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 you know, most of the even handicapped, uh, 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 you know, the differently able can use uh, the, the the furniture, this uncluttered space between the benches, and also a uh, very very interesting uh, observation is that crime prevention through environmental design. You know, uh, as the seating distribution and the commercial spaces are placed in such a way that the shops are in clear uh, field of view of people sitting on the benches. You know, there is there is uh, visual connectivity from the shops to the out and in. So. 
so it's it's very hard to steal stuff from any shop in mg mag and uh, you know uh, it's uh, the, uh, there is no visual obstruction at all so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, it's not a great opportunity for criminals so even the central plantations have been kept dwarf and in proper shape uh, to provide maximum cross street view as well so these are the, some of the observations as an architect or as a designer that i keep constantly observing you know sometimes lay people um, uh, uh, they they kind of miss out uh, these uh, 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 these kind of design features but as an architect i find this very very interesting and now even the drainage system along the street pavement to facilitate rainwater uh, 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 drainage very interestingly laid uh, uh, linearly it kind of it kind of uh, gives you a sense of direction again uh, you know and the place is cleaned up uh, every morning uh, when the shops are yet to be open and there's no uh, not much activity in the area that's when so it's very spick and span and there's a lot of cleaning however on special occasions like holy the cleaning is done in the evening itself and the uh, washing of the street using hose pipes now uh, numerous dust bins for uh, dry waste blue colored and wet waste for uh, you know green colored are placed throughout mg mag along the middle band near benches of course you always have those uh, uh, insensitive and uh, 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 tourists who would still uh, uh, throw a, a wrapper uh, outside even when there's a dustbin but uh, the waste is uh, constantly you know the uh, the effort that they put in and the maintenance the the waste is remo uh, removed and transfer transferred along the street cleaning early morning hours by the workers under gangtok municipal corporation so there's constant annual maintenance and daily maintenance and there are some fountains of course some of them were not operable uh, entire uh, street is uh, litter free and smoke free and it is strictly followed in general during even the peak tourist season it, it, you can actually see locals even telling tourists uh, not to uh, you know litter and not to smoke uh, at mg mag and uh, there are there are a lot of stray dogs and animals thanks to the tourists uh, throwing food around and uh, uh, feeding them uh, and they they these animals kind of uh, tend to defecate on the walkway from time to time uh, sometimes creating problems for the pedestrians uh, but there are, there are a lot of strays on mg mag and very very interesting uh, 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 you know uh, paver blocks of different shapes sizes patterns and colors uh, you know uh, to to kind of again help with wayfinding uh, to kind of uh, the the flooring itself kind of emphasizes that you are now in a public square and now you will uh, get back into the linear walkway and you know so very very uh, interesting or oh, this is this is the part where you can set up a, a, a you know a, a kiosk for events so overall uh, there is uh, there is a very strong uh, 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 street character to mg mag and it's it's uh, 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 you will see that the various materials uses uh, the paper blocks the light fittings the benches the landscape all very merge uh, merge very uh, interestingly together now connections to crowd pullers such as lal bazaar and denzong cinema and presence of transportation nodes at both ends of the street increases daily traffic in the area you know and uh, seating and street lamps and vegetarian uh, a vegetation strip uh, like i showed you improves visual experience comfort safety landmarks uh, such as the gandhi statue the red panda statue uh, all of this uh, uh, you know kind of add uh, character to mg mag and uh, uh, most of uh, you will see most of the buildings have sloping roofs uh, covered with galvanized iron sheets. So this can be credited to the frequent rains and uh, hailstorms in the area. Majority of the buildings have outward opening, uh, uh, you, uh, white painted wooden frame windows, rectangular. So there's a overall character. Even though each of these buildings are unique in its own way, they have uh, some kind of unique uh, character tying them all together. And uh, this is the road leading to the more informal Lal Market downstairs, uh, you know, uh, 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 down the steps. And uh, Again, the seed, these are the, the low water requirement and tolerance. Uh, most of the landscape, the plants and species used uh, have low water requirement and they have more tolerance for cold weather and winds. And there's a, there's a, a, a sacred a fig tree that stands tall across midpoint of the street. So uh, it can go as low as minus 10 degrees. So most of these plants kind of uh, uh, conifer shrubs, most of them kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
have tolerance for cold weather also. So uh, in, in consideration of the ongoing pandemic and rising number of COVID cases uh, in Gangtok, various measures were taken in the functioning of MG Marg. You know, these are a few of the pictures. Sometimes it was really sad to see how uh, such a thriving, beautiful, busy place can also go silent. And uh, these are uh, extreme uh, incidents like the pandemic that caused this, you can see that uh, 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 they were quick enough to mark uh, mark uh, these squares on the uh, uh, on the paved area just outside the shops to maintain social distancing the uh, most of the most of the shops did not allow more than five people uh, to enter the shops and small shops had tied ropes so that the the uh, customers don't come in most stores and cafes had sanitizers and and uh, uh, the uh, you know in the reception area and visitors were asked to use them before entering in uh, uh, and any any uh, uh, any uh, uh, person on mg mark not wearing a mask was pulled up by the local police uh, uh, on duty so uh, uh, from uh, december uh, uh, 21 till march 21 uh, it was kind of open, uh, 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 but, uh, you know, the tourists started flocking in again, but again, in April 2021, with the increasing number of COVID cases, uh, night curfew was uh, imposed. Uh, uh, and in May 2021, uh, 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 again, uh, you know, Sikkim government issued the order to restrain both vehicular and non-vehicular movement from 5 p.m. to 10, 9 a.m. But now you'll see that, uh, again, MG Marg is bouncing back to where it was so two extreme uh, uh, you know uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, conditions of mg mark that you saw pre pandemic and post pandemic so uh, with reference to some indicators of good urbanism and parameters of a good place mg mark uh, seems to be a space that uh, becomes a place you know a space that actually turns out to be a memorable place uh, it's built on the past, it's connected to the landscape, it's mixed use, uh, constantly adapting to change, highly cohesive, economically viable, equitable and inclusive of all kinds of people, it's environmentally conscious and of course pedestrian centric. So I personally think it's a great place and I, I just want to ask y'all, do y'all uh, think it's a great place too? Thank you. Thank you, Pratik. This was a wonderful journey through, you know, MG Mark. It feels like, you know, I have already visited the place and feel connected to it. Uh, wonderful presentation both by Anirban and you. Uh, and I, I think you have brought out uh, the entire street in such a beautiful manner through different times, through, you know, the extreme conditions as well as, you know, the daily routines of people. You also talked about, uh, you know, uh, that the people, uh, the locals and the visitors have different perceptions about the place. So uh, do you think uh, there is a contrast between uh, how local people uh, engage with the same public space and how visitors you know, perceive and engage with the same space? Is this, is this for me or for Anubhi? Yes, yes, for you. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, of course there's, there is a, a, a sense of uh, belongingness amongst locals and you know, they, they really, like I told you, they really, uh, you wouldn't see any of the locals uh, litter or spit or, you know, they, uh, they make sure that they use the facilities provided by the government. There's this uh, sense of uh, belongingness uh, there and sense of ownership. But I have, uh, I have seen uh, insensitive tourists and I have seen, uh, you know, uh, there's this kind of insensitivity at many levels. It's right from, uh, uh, you, uh, you would see that uh, if, if uh, you've gone to, uh, Bhutan in Paro or Timpu, you would see that there is more uh, respect for local food, local cuisine, local clothing. Lo uh, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, even in a far flung place like Sikkim, Gangtok, you would have people from other metropolitan cities going and demanding air conditioned rooms or they are going and demanding, uh, you know, a pizza even high up in the Himalayas. Or, you know, there's, this, uh, there's a, a sense of uh, a lack of sensitivity. And uh, I think that uh, kind of erodes uh, uh, the local, uh, 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 you know, it kind of erodes a local character of a place eventually because sometimes it gets tough to find good authentic Sikkimese food, but it's easy to find a Domino's pizza. So uh, I think, uh, of course, and then there are uh, other users like uh, 
you know, most of the businesses, you would see there's a very strong Marwadi community there. There are South Indian community in Sikkim. It's very, very interesting to talk to these locals. Uh, uh, locals, I call them, uh, these are immigrants who have become locals because, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are second or third generation in Sikkim. And it's very interesting to see, uh, see how trade uh, brought them here and how tourism has brought uh, uh, people here. So, yeah, they all perceive... Uh, whether it's MG Mag or Gangtok or other parts of Sikkim in completely different ways. Yeah. Uh, Anurban, what do you think about, you know, you, you stayed there for two years, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, how, what was your, you know, kind of engagement with this place? Were you frequenting this place for your daily needs or it was just occasional or as a, you know, as a place where you would celebrate your small joys? I would actually go there very occasionally, like every week. And yeah, I completely agree with Pratik. So like the locals there would treat the place like their home and all the people there were the family. But the tourists are often very insensitive, like littering the place and attracting wild animals or like domestic animals to go there and further litter even more. Yeah. So, um, Prati, coming back to your, you know, uh, where you're talking about, you know, different, uh, you know, local uh, indigenous uh, cuisine and other, you know, uh, maybe mannerisms also changing because of uh, newer things coming into a place. Uh, do you think that, you know, this idea of creating a boulevard has actually led to some sort of gentrification happening in the place? And also, you know, if you could take us back into time into, as to how this entire transformation, because we see that there's a very hard built to edge kind of a construction and uh, being a very sensitive you know um, uh, sensitive eco sensitive area uh, suddenly we saw, we saw the earlier historical photograph also when which we had these single story structures very down to earth and then suddenly we have this uh, three plus uh, you know uh, floor story structures and intensive commercial happening activity happening so what would you uh, say to that yes, so uh, of course uh, the the uh, i think this is happening throughout the country, you know, where you have villages becoming towns and then these towns eventually become cities and these cities become mega cities. Of course, the explosion, uh, the moment you have opportunity in a place, it kind of draws more people, it kind of draws uh, uh, more. So, uh, like I said, in, in the 80s, when the road was laid from New Jalpaiguri to Gangtok, that is when uh, uh, Sikkim became more accessible. I just, uh, it's recently happened to Ladakh also. And, you know, I, uh, I hope uh, uh, this is not the state of affairs. We should learn from our past. So what happens is uh, uh, when uh, Sikkim became out open to the rest of the country uh, and other, uh, uh, other uh, 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 countries closer like Bhutan and Bangladesh and Nepal uh, too. So what, what you saw was uh, there was a rush uh, the, uh, 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 the the tourism sector in Sikkim was recognized. There was a rush of uh, uh, immigrants. There was a rush of people from other parts of Sikkim also to Gangtok. Now, in fact, if you see, I still feel uh, there is some sort of sensitivity. It is kind of contradicting. There's some sort of uh, sensitivity, but I also see a lot of insensitivity. So what happens is, uh, 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 you know, when I spoke to... Uh, uh, architects and urban designers at the Urban Development Authority, they said that suddenly the vehicular traffic increased so much uh, that the government and, you know, uh, there was a lot of honking. Uh, so because these all these houses later turned into shop fronts and, you know, uh, earlier it was, uh, du uh, you know, uh, Dukan Niche and Makan Upar, that was the kind of... Uh, 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 that was the kind of system there, but eventually what happened is even the Makans started giving away uh, these spaces for rent uh, and even they turned into shops. So the, the if you had 10 shops at a time, they suddenly became 50 shops and then they eventually became 100 shops. So what happened is the amount of vehicular traffic increased and uh, uh, people used to uh, uh, park it right in the front of the shops. That used to block uh, traffic movement uh, uh, and uh, eventually, the government uh, and the Urban De uh, Development Authority, they were forced to kind of pedestrianize this uh, because uh, uh, they also wanted to uh, encourage more walking and all of that. And they, they kind of pedestrianized this. Yes, it's a very sharp edge, but uh, this is, uh, uh, I, I feel this was uh, 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 something they had to do to kind of control uh, uh, circulation and movement, both vehicular and non-vehicular. Yeah. And, and 
basically, you know, uh, uh, but I think there's somewhere, you know, the, the commercial, the mixed usage of space is very critical, both for built and unbuilt spaces. Because yeah. uh, the moment uh, such kind of intervention happens, it became, it becomes like a celebratory uh, space, more of a performance space, as if, you know, the city is converging in this space to show it to of itself. So, yes. so I think there are these perils of, you know, uh, developing, having these very stark uh, interventions. Because Definitely. In fact, uh, during events, uh, you will observe that uh, during non-event days, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, it's uh, okay. But during events, I think even uh, Anirban would agree, it gets packed, you know, it, uh, this, this uh, 310 odd meters of uh, the marg is not enough. And uh, you will see that what happens is the crowd kind of spills out into the vehicular zone also and then that kind of blocks uh, traffic and on event days it can it can get a little crazy so what they do right now is certain vehicular zones also are uh, uh, also converted into non vehicular zone on event days uh, so i i i foresee a future where uh, uh, you know, larger sections of the uh, the city are going to become pedestrian, and I I feel uh, that the vehic vehicles will be parked off really far away, and people would be encouraged to walk more, or cycle more, or skateboard more. Uh, this is what I think uh, might happen in the future. Yeah, and also, you know, uh, I am also intrigued and would like to understand, uh, like this particular stretch is like a cosmetic surgery in the entire. You know, if you see the settlement pattern and how the city and other public spaces would have evolved. Uh, how do you see this particular space, you know, connects with the other streets, like you talked about the Lal Bazaar. So are they in complete contrast, you know, what, what's happening there? Oh, yes. So, so you have this kind of, uh, uh, like I told you, you have this kind of uh, shop fronts in, uh, in MG Mag, and then this very formal, uh, you know, then you have a footpath, and then you have this, uh, 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 the, the, uh, linear, uh, uh, you know, this uh, uh, linear space uh, in between. So now the moment you go down to Lal Market, you'll suddenly find this formality uh, disappearing. You know, there's suddenly this informality. There are hawkers and there are, uh, 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 you know, there are street vendors and there are, uh, so here, uh, you know, on MG Mark that you have an Adidas store and then you have a pizza uh, or a Momo place or, you know, restaurants, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, we know that on uh, on one one level of the road on MG Mag, uh, let's say a T-shirt costs around nine hundred rupees. But I know I if I just go down a few steps, I will get a T-shirt for hundred rupees also. So it kind of caters to to different uh, uh, you know different uh, typology of tourists or a different typology of locals, and that's very interesting because I can. Uh, I can uh, have, uh, you know, dine in in a fancy restaurant on MG Mark, but I can also go down uh, uh, these steps to Lal Market and, uh, you know, eat off from a street vendor or, uh, you know, buy some stuff. So it's very interesting on many levels, actually. So affordability, uh, even the informality. So I, I might not find the same hawker twice, you know, uh, but in MG Mark, it is strict, uh, it is compartmentalized. So that, that makes it very interesting. Yeah. So I think somewhere, you know, uh, uh, I feel that, you know, uh, from this high street kind of a character, uh, there should be some kind of a gradual merging into the other public spaces, other market streets. So that, uh, because the experience, as you said, that in, uh, eventually what has happened in this particular stretch of the, you know, street, uh, though it is very comfortable, it is inviting, there's imageability, sociability, everything is happening very, you know, in the, in the perfect manner as you would want it to happen. But do you think that somewhere we are lacking that, you know, experience, the authentic experience of being in Gangtok and, you know, interacting? Oh, yeah. with oh, yeah. So, so uh, that, uh, that's what I said, right? Uh, uh, the moment you have uh, an uh, 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 influx of outsiders and then their demands being met, uh, and uh, you know the uh, the generic sets in. What what happens is, uh, like I told you, in Bhutan you will not find a bottle of Coca Cola. In Bhutan you will not find uh, uh, a pizza. Or in Bhutan you will find uh, uh, the local uh, cuisine, the local uh, products being sold there. Uh, they will not be selling generic uh, products there. So. So uh, yes, there is a loss of identity and loss of character. The generic has set in, like for example, uh, uh, sometimes uh, it could also feel like Connaught Place, you know, that's, uh, that's what happens uh, exactly. in, uh, at MG Mag. Uh, uh, but I see that, uh, you know, in fact, even uh, uh, 
uh, if you look at uh, uh, what do you say, uh, if you look at let's say festivals like Holi and Diwali, uh, this time Holi was celebrated by the Manwadi community as uh, almost like it's Dwar, uh, you know, uh, 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 other parts of the uh, let's say it's in Banaras or something. So that's how uh, uh, it was. Or for example, Diwali, but. There are certain uh, Sikkimese uh, festivals and uh, events that are Loki and it is being celebrated far away from MG Mark. Uh, so yes, it, it tends to be uh, become generic. It tends to become, but it's not just, it's not just the design. Uh, uh, it's also the activities and events being hosted that also makes uh, or the, or the food being served or the clothes being worn or sold that also makes a place local or the music being heard or, uh, you you would find uh, uh, Sikkim youngsters sitting and playing songs by uh, uh, you know Metallica or Led Zeppelin on the streets of Sikkim. So what do you do? Uh, you don't uh, find many of them actually sick, uh, singing Sikkimese songs. So yes, the generic does set in, and that happens at many layers. Uh, layers. It cannot just only be the built uh, uh, you know the built uh, uh, aspect. And I think somewhere the local community also starts feeling that, you know, this is something which is, uh, you know, acceptable in this particular space. And they start, you know, uh, trying to perform in the same manner, behave yes, in the yes. same manner. Sadly, and, that, that has also, also happened in Leh. Uh, you know, if you go to Leh, Ladakh, it's uh, 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 the the tourists would go there uh, high up in the Himalayas in the uh, and ask for uh, uh, idli and dosa. You know, that's, that's what happens, very sadly. But... Uh, there's no de uh, uh, very less demand for local food and local. Uh... I think I think you in, in one of your slides you showed you know the lanes or the steps that lead down to the lower market or the upper market. I think those are the areas where then needs to you know focus more on to connect this to the other you know spaces yes, in the city. Of course, the terrain. I mean, the some at some places the level differences are so high. You know, it is it is uh, these uh, very steep steps that have been cast from one level to another and then these close tightly packed uh, uh, buildings with no light and ventilation i believe these uh, these access points could have been made more interesting or of course there are events like there are these uh, you know one off events where there is wall art workshops happening or they're trying to beautify one street you know a couple of shopkeepers get together and they do something uh, those are happening but uh, they are still one off events i think uh, uh, the the urban development authority and uh, the locals, uh, the shopkeepers, they all could get together and actually uh, beautify uh, or you know make these access points and uh, uh, these uh, uh, these are also parts of the street and that one tends to forget you know that, that's what this uh, there's an entire focus on the linear movement but not the exit and entrances. But it's it's beautiful that it's porous. Uh, but I uh, I just wish this this exit and entry points were also made interesting. Yes, uh, there is a question from Anshu Darbari. Uh, Anshu, would you like to unmute yourself and ask the question? Um, hi. Uh, so great presentations. I've never been to Gangtok, so this was good to know. Um, so uh, when you talked about uh, the insensitivity. Uh, because of because the visitors are uh, more like uh, they don't understand what it means to like uh, be in a place where you belong. Uh, for them, they are visiting the place. It was great insight. So uh, my question is, um, as designers, as planners, um, do you think there's a need to regulate this sort of um, outlook from visitors towards? Uh, the places that they visit and if yes then how can we do that because this is a very um, um, I would say um, kind of a behavioral aspect is there um, but then at the same time it's very specific to like um, places individual cities like if, if such a thing would happen in Delhi it would be very different because Delhi is like cosmopolitan and uh, same as with Mumbai, um, with Bangalore. So um, do you think this is something there is with the heritage cities or cities that are not explored so much? So through awareness campaigns or through making more um, campaigns like um, Amitabh Bachchan did for Ranok Kutch, 
Um, so do you think those would help um, bringing that sense of belonging yeah. for the visitors? Definitely, Anshu. That's a, that's a very, very interesting and important question. Like, for example, I'm talking to you right now from Cochin in Kerala. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, over the years, even uh, a place like Kerala or even a place like Sikkim and Gangtok or even a place like what happens is the generic is setting in. Like I said, you know, there is this constant loss of identity. Uh, there's this uh, constant uh, uh, bombardment of insensitive built environment design. Uh, there is visual pollution setting in more than campaigns and uh, 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 what is important is policy making i believe you know for example in right now in cochin uh, 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 we have fort cochin where there is a lot of uh, heritage policies that are being uh, uh, you know that are being uh, uh, followed and there's there's even demolition of old buildings of such an age is not allowed or a retrofitting them has to be done uh, under certain guidance uh, 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 let's say an intact guidance or uh, a conservation specialist has to be on board so uh, definitely rules and policies do make uh, much uh, a, a lot of difference and like you said image making you know for example uh, you took amita bachchan's the run of kutch example that is basically image making you know uh, uh, 10 20 years from now all our cities would start looking and feeling the same and that is very very sad you know uh, uh, and this comes from a country where once uh, you know, we we are a country where we have Jaipur and uh, cities like Madurai and Chidambaram and, uh, you know, Hampi and uh, uh, Ladakh uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so so what happens is there is definitely a loss of identity. It uh, can be blamed on impatient capital that is being uh, sloshed from here, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the entire lens. Uh, of looking at a place uh, is through the uh, the lens of economy or the uh, you know how much of uh, capital is being invested in fact uh, i was i was giving a talk the other day you know uh, there's this entire notion of smart cities and all that talk happening in india uh, now in in a place like china there is a city being born every day but uh, the problem is most of these uh, they are just cities, they are not Chinese cities. So similarly now, even in India, in the developing part of the world, every day there's being uh, there's a new town or a city being born or a town becoming a city or, you know, with the influx uh, of demographics and all of that. But the problem is they are not Indian cities. There's no Indianness to it. And that's where uh, we, should, uh, we should look at uh, policies by architects and uh, uh, urbanists uh, like uh, Korea, who said that uh, uh, we must... Uh, try and uh, 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 avoid this loss of identity of Indian cities. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, when I when I rode on a motorcycle from uh, from uh, uh, Ladakh all the way to K Kanyakumari across several months, uh, I realized that uh, this is uh, this country of us with all its plurality. Every hundred kilometers, the language changes, the food changes, the culture changes. But the, there are places where you uh, you visit, and it's all generic. There is no difference. In fact. Uh, even, uh, you know, people look up to coming to Cochin and Kerala or going to uh, Gangtok and Sikkim, but uh, trust me, the, the generic has set in, uh, I don't feel any difference between some parts of uh, Bombay and some parts of Cochin, they all feel the same, uh, uh, especially the built environment, especially the open places, especially the streets, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, even the landscape elements, there are so many buildings that use ornamental plants and there is there are so many uh, you know many of these uh, this foreign investment that sets in so it's uh, becoming fine difficult to find uh, uh, what is truly local so th there are so many layers to this loss of identity and uh, uh, of course uh, it, uh, i would always i would always talk about policies and i would really talk about governance always and i think that's that is very very important awareness uh, in governance is is truly missing because some of these, because I, I work on a lot of government projects, I understand that some of these uh, 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 last, uh, you know, some of these uh, final decision makers or the, the decision makers, they have no, no idea of what uh, identity is. They have no idea about, uh, uh, you know, the importance of uh, maintaining the identity of a place. They have no idea. And that, uh, so governance, education, awareness, uh, campaigns, uh, there's so many layers and I think uh, festivals such as these are important and 
it's it's again sad you know because the turnout is i just hope all this uh, you you need to have uh, uh, government uh, people uh, attending such talks you need to have decision makers and policy makers attending such talks uh, it needs to go back to them thank you anshu thank you so much yeah so i have one more question based on like what you said um so you talk talked about like individual uh, cities uh, the loss of identity the loss of image that each city has so um, i finished my urban design uh, last year and uh, i was in the us for last 3 years i was able to visit a lot of europe a lot of us what i realized uh, now i'm back in india and now i realized that um, especially in western uh, countries like uh, us and canada a lot of them are the same there's no there's no diversity there when you go to europe there's a lot of heritage character and they celebrate that character because and like people even if there are visitors among different uh, cities or among those different countries they still celebrate it they make it their own but there's But a, there's, a, yeah. there's a reason to that and so for example okay. most of cities in the us are greenfield uh, greenfield uh, development you know yes. they they are, mm-hmm. uh, they, are uh, they hardly have any history to look back into their past is very very new they are very very young cities they mm-hmm. uh, most of it was greenfield you know uh, reclaimed land or uh, barren land that was uh, 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 that was actually uh, uh, you know what he say uh, robbed from the indigenous uh, societies uh, they were driven mm-hmm. away uh, and these these vast piece of land were just uh, you know uh, they, they they were a clean slate to start off uh, 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 the cities in the us europe uh, on the other side wasn't that they have the rich cultural uh, uh, you know traditional uh, history uh, uh, that that kind of uh, you know it, the, the cities evolved they 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 were not born you know so mm-hmm. that makes a huge difference now unfortunately india too is a civilization you know we still have cities like banaras and jaisalmer and uh, cochin and uh, so many other so many cities i can think of uh, but uh, you know in the name of development uh, the kind of compromises we are making the kind of uh, you know today uh, 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 today we applaud the well behaved glass box Mm-hmm. and you know we we uh, applaud the the air conditioned glass box mushrooming throughout the country but uh, how many of us have have tried to uh, you know uh, i'm talking about the non uh, architects and non designers how many of uh, uh, them have actually you know like in 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 cochin as a city i asked a person they they went to the local uh, you know air conditioned lulu mall but they've not they've not gone out to public spaces or gardens or mm-hmm. the, the heritage structures you know mm-hmm. so uh, uh this is uh, there's a, a a lack of social sense and awareness towards this kind of development too yeah and what i realized uh, during my education in india and in us was that urban design in india is like really a misconceived topic and people don't realize it yes oh yes so i believe like each city has to have uh, like place making regulations uh, that really involves uh, heritage um, like consultants who who know the city local people communities like in terms like i just saw uh, the images of a gangtok you just showed and i realized um there's a lot going on on the ground uh, on the shop fronts like in in the ground floor uh, activation but at the same time if someone asks like i wanted to ask you this question how do you like what is the architectural character that you see on the on mg road and this is another question i had like what would you say what the character was so many MG of these road? buildings are really old but at the same time because of lack of policies many of these buildings can be clad in acp today many of these buildings can be demolished today many of these buildings because they turned from residential to commercial their entire facades are stripped off and made into uh, structural glazing um, there is no uh, uh, there is no uh, policies on on how uh, the branding should happen so uh, it it could get a little uh, it could uh, uh, you know get a little 
uh, uh, many of these properties are being sold off uh, uh, from residential to to commercial uh, property. So there's a, a, a lack of architectural uh, uh, character overall. Uh, you will see that, uh, of course, there are still many of these buildings that still retain the slope, uh, uh, GI uh, roofed, and uh, you know the white. Uh, 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 what do you say, the wooden frame windows, like I saw in some of the buildings. But unfortunately, many of the other buildings are being, uh, their architectural uh, uh, characters also being stripped away. So again, so what is required is some kind of control, right? You cannot have, you cannot expect, a, 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 let's say, a certain community where their business is more important uh, or uh, the aspect of economy is more important than anything else you cannot uh, 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 you cannot expect them to have uh, sensitivity towards architectural character because they want that uh, glazed shop front to sell what they are selling inside so how do you do it you know how do you do the less evil thing in a controlled uh, conservative matter that's where you need specialists Anshu. so since you're back in india you uh, better start working uh, in the field and better start uh, 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 you know, we, we really need specialists like you uh, around here. Yeah? Uh, that's the problem. Some of our best minds uh, fly off to other countries. Uh, uh, all of you all should come back and start working here. That's what is needed. Definitely. Yes, that's why I came back. I was like, no, I have to go back. <laughs> yes. And don't just get only into teaching. Practice also. Just don't yes, get definitely. into the classroom. Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, get into the classroom, inspire and encourage the next generation, but also practice. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Can I come in, uh, sir? Yes, yes. Sir. Harsh, yes. My name is Harsh Kumar. I live in North Bengal, Siliguri. Nice to meet you. And me. I'm quite familiar with the uh, with with what what you talked about in Gangtok and frequently travel there. I just wanted to talk about the heritage of the city. The problem in India is the uh, the first problem here is the exodus of population to the cities and is uncontrolled. Uh, if you travel to uh, two cities in Bhutan, Paro and Thimphu, Thimphu is the capital. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, Thimphu is the capital and Paro is another city where they have the FE. Uh, both are about uh, two, two and a half, three hours away from each other. Now, Paro, the government, uh, Bhutan King, has not allowed any construction above, I think, three stories. All buildings there look as if you are 1,000 years back what you, you would have exactly. seen. Exactly. You go on their main street, it's just what it was must have been many, many years ago. With the Paro River flowing next to that, they have not allowed any construction there. Uh, the houses, all houses look practically their window structure their roof shape, their colors, more or less similar. There are no multi story apartments. Unlike Thimpu, Thimpu, they have modernized, they have got lots of these new apartment kind of buildings. They've retained part of the old heritage. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, one major issue that uh, Bhutan doesn't have is the population. Yes. They have well-controlled population. Their uh, rules and regulations are very, very strict being a kingdom. So I think those two are the basic issues. Yeah, which goes back to governance, in. regulations, policies, uh, getting, in so, fact, uh, Christopher Benninger was, was called to so design I, the capital. Yeah, the one more point sir, I wanted to make is that uh, I think way back in 1940s, 50s, whichever year uh, uh, Chandigarh was uh, developed. Yeah. I, I wonder why, I mean, this, question is talking about government. Uh, why couldn't Indian government plan another city like Chandigarh? You go to Chandigarh today, I went there in 60s and I went just last year and I didn't find any difference between sector 8 and other areas. And it's within our own country and we have not been able to uh, uh, really <laughs> follow the example of that city. Very true. That's it. That's, that's, in that's fact, what I in fact, sir, just outside the city, just outside the boundaries of the city in Mohali and other parts, you would find slums and chawls. You know, uh, we uh, uh, it was it was a great opportunity to understand city planning and understand the V7 road layout and all of that. But just outside the city uh, borders, you have uh, uh, you know uh, unplanned uh, development happening. I wonder why. 
Yes, yes. I think uh, that's what that's what I also wonder why uh, why our policy makers could not just replicate another city like that when Delhi was expanding around the same time. Yeah. Uh, if you you know in 60s and 70s, Delhi was not uh, what it is today, or Gurgaon was not expanded uh, what it is today. It could have been planned in similar lines. So, I think that explains most of the I think it, it all goes back to the sheer number of people that we have in India. It, it all goes back to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank if, you. I would, if, 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 if I would just like to add, you know, it's a very interesting example of, you know, Chandigarh and Mohali, as you mentioned. And similarly, I would say, you know, uh, MG Marg and Lal Bazaar. Yes. So the mindset somewhere is that we need some kind of a, Chandigarh becomes like a performance city, you know, where you want to showcase it to the world. But yes. whereas you are not, you don't take pride in your other, you know, cities and try to, you know, see how those, I'm sure if that focus comes to these other cities, other newer areas also, uh, somewhere we'll have some beautiful, uh, you know, showcase area. But interestingly, Chandigarh is also uh, uh, not, not accepted by a lot also, you know, it's uh, there, I still remember I was having this conversation with DV contractor and uh, I asked her what she thought about uh, uh, Chandigarh and Kabuzia. She said Kabuzia is uh, is a very good architect, but in France, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, there are so many viewpoints uh, to this. Yeah. So, so, because you know, there do there are pros and cons in every case scenario. You know, but like Kabuzia, like Nehru, can, like Nehru said, you can you can like or hate Chandigarh, but you cannot ignore it. So yeah, so <laughs> we, you can always you know contradict or debate about the planning and design being you know indigenous to India to the local context. But uh, I'm sure the governance remains with us. You know, it is the same people governing, as Mr. Harsh Kumar pointed out, that you know the governance system, the whole mechanism is the same. But why are we not uh, bringing that same kind of sincerity to other cities and other places? So uh, that's one important thing I think that probably needs to uh, be given some attention. There's one last question from Manju uh, Pundir. Uh, Manju, would you like to ask the question? Well, I'll read the question. Uh, she is asking Pratik, what are the financial implications on the retailers, restaurants, and hotel occupancy, etc., because of the pedestrianization? Is the business positively affected or negatively affected by it? So definitely, it's it's a, a, a win-win situation for businesses because uh, there is more time being spent in front of uh, uh, these shops and restaurants, or uh, more time being spent, uh, uh, you know, walking. Uh, by them than drive past them, you know. So there, obviously, pedestrianization and activities. You know, uh, uh, strumming a guitar and strumming a guitar with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, 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 like Anirban said, with a, a softy in hand are both uh, two uh, two experiences. So this is what the MG Mark uh, kind of allows you to do. You there is this, uh, uh, you know, you can hang around. You can. Uh, you can buy uh, stuff, you can, uh, 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 so I think it's a win-win situation for, uh, for uh, uh, you know, the businesses at MG Mark because of uh, this, it is definitely positively affected it. Uh, and it also allows you to spill to other types of businesses, like I said, formal and informal businesses and hawkers and vendor streets and at different levels uh, of the terrain. So yes, uh, pedestrianization, See that uh, how many of us are, of our cities are actually walkable? You know that is the question that uh, we must ask. Uh, uh, in fact, the problem today is most of our cities are being designed for automobiles. You know uh, uh, that is the biggest problem. We are designing cities for uh, cars and uh, uh, you know buses. How many of our cities? Uh, uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, I get worried and anxious when I cycle out into the street uh, today. You never know when you would be knocked off by a car or a bus, you know. So uh, uh, that's the main problem. Our cities are not being designed for humans or human circulation. They're being designed for automobiles. So uh, uh, one very interesting thing that uh, Rahul Mehrotra had said is that, uh, 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 you know, like cities like Bombay, uh, the organic growth, you'll, you'll have someone coming in, uh, setting up a chai stall there. Uh, the next monsoons, he has a tarpaulin sheet above him. Uh, 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 the monsoons after that, he's got a, a, a brick structure and a tin sheet there. And then the next monsoon after that, there's a pakka shop there. Now that's where the problem lies. And this is happening right on the footpath. You know, so this is where, uh, uh, you know, corruption and governance and policies and regulations and rules and all these layers come, uh, you know, it's like a failed system. 
if pedestrianization, if businesses, if uh, 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 vehicular movement, all of this are regulated with the least corruption, regulated with regulations and policies and uh, conservation and uh, mutual respect for built environment is there. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, it, it could have been done. Uh, some of these places, uh, I don't think we can even turn back uh, without, uh, uh, without causing displacement. You know, today, if we have to go for corrective measures, it's going to cause displacement. It will have to actually pick up people and move them to another place. And that's, that uh, usually does not work in a country like ours because then, then there is conflict and then there is, uh, uh, you know, voices raised uh, uh, for and against them. So it is complicated. You know, I am working on government projects. I know how complicated it is. Uh, uh, there are rules, there are regulations, but imposing and implementing them are a completely different challenge. So it is not easy. It is definitely not easy. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it starts with the smallest step, I guess. You know, some of these most educated, uh, uh, I remember when I was in gang talk, some of these, this very uh, educated set of tourists, I, I, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're not even kids or they're not even teenagers, you know, a full grown men and women. I saw them litter. I told them, uh, you know, you've just littered and this is MG Mark. Can you please, it's a litter free zone. Can you just... Uh, put it uh, into the dustbin. And the first thing they say, uh, say is, these are the, this is why I call them incense. First thing they say is, uh, uh, you know, we pay Swachh Bharat says tax, you know, that's what they, they answer. So this is the kind of arrogance and uh, uh, this is the kind of uh, insensitivity we have. I think it all starts at home. It all starts with the self. Uh, you know, I might sound, it might sound spiritual, but it all starts with the self, you know, you, uh, uh, if if our mind and hearts are in the right place, I think one day our cities also could be in the right places. So, yes. so uh, in the sense, and very you very rightly pointed out, you know, the way we are designing the architecture, uh, the way we are creating the identity of the place, uh, uh, you know, the manner in which we respect the local indigenous community and their cultures, their behaviors and manners, all I think becomes a lesson. And, and public spaces are very good, you know, spaces, arenas for uh, the young generation to learn. Because it's, the learning will all, not only just happen in schools and colleges, it happens in these public spaces where we watch people and how they behave in different scenarios and different circumstances. Uh, so I think very rightly that somewhere as designers, our contribution can be like Dan Gale always talks about the 60 kilometer per hour architecture. We have to yes. get out from that kind of mindset and get to that five kilometer per hour architecture or even one kilometer per hour architecture because we have in a public space we have children we have senior citizens we have people from all uh, you know age age groups uh, uh, using that space so that kind of sensitivity has to uh, be brought in uh, while we are designing in these spaces and i think that dialogue has to be kept open while we are implementing these interventions because if it comes as an alien concept there might be issues regarding you know, ownership of such kind of interventions. And I think maybe if that dialogue or communication is there, the people will also contribute by you know, uh, uh, giving, uh, telling the designers about the opportunities that, be, that can be created for them. Because sometimes as designers, we are working on different cities and we they usually don't belong to that particular space. So uh, that sensitivity can be brought in when locals and communities uh, are involved in the entire process of uh, creating the place. Our cities the place. are a reflection of who we are, you know, we, all of us who stay in the city. So, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, so thank you so much, Pratik and Anirban. It was a very, very stimulating, you know, uh, talk about streets and how we connect with them. Uh, uh, so please, uh, we will now, you know, I will just share my screen for the next uh, session. Uh, I'll share the poster. So the next session, uh, basically, uh, the next Lake Story session titled uh, Love, Watermelon, Juice and Comic Books is scheduled uh, for 31st October 2021 from 5 p.m. onwards. Our play storyteller for the session, Mr. Aryan Mehta, will be taking us out for the evening to Leaping Windows Cafe, Varsova, Mumbai. The place expert for the session, Mr. Rohan Shiv Kumar, will unravel the charm and subtle workings of such intimate social spaces of interaction. So stay tuned for our upcoming play story. I would like to thank each one of you for your patronage to the Festival of Places. Do visit our website, www.indiaheritagehub.org for more engaging content. You can also support and participate in multiple in initiatives and programs of CATS by volunteering your skills and supporting us financially. You can write to us at info at for more details. 
So look forward to meeting all of you again next Sunday on 31st October, same time, same place for another exciting journey to the public spaces in our cities.